weekend, a group of uh, a group of skinheads decided. What do you call them skinheads? No, let's not call them skinheads. They, they don't even deserve that kind of recognition. Let's call them football hooligans, isn't it? Uh, football hooligans masquerading as protesters decided to descend onto London in an effort to defend the statues that were boarded up. Right? <laughs> it's a quite a preposterous story, isn't it? Really, to be honest. Let me see if I can get it up. So I guess the weekend before last, um, all the most of the London protesters that were going around were, you know, pretty peaceful. Everything kind of went um, pretty smoothly. People went out there, voiced their opinions, rallied, mobilised, encouraged each other, all that good stuff. But then there was a small minority of people who also got the chance to take it upon themselves to, you know, um, deface or in the case of what happened in Bristol, uh, topple statues that they felt as if had kind of you know went past their sell by date you know statues that commemorated um some icons within Amer english history but also had checkered past right people who were essentially um the some of the mainstays of the slave trade back in the days um I never just really understood that anyway in the first place, why you'd have a statue commemorate somebody who was responsible for the slave trade, right? Who played any part in it whatsoever. It would be one of those things that would kind of be like a bit of a, an embarrassing moment in history for you, I guess. Um, there are obviously those people on the right, conservatives for the most part, who are like, you know, taking down our statues is also trying to attempt to, you know, erase our history, which is totally ridiculous. You know, the, there are no statues erected of Genghis Khan, but we know he existed, in it, but we don't need his statue being erected in the middle of fucking, you know, Tiananmen Square. Doesn't make any sense. Um, you can read up about these people. Huh? History doesn't disappear because you de deface a statue. And if anything, it kind of solidifies its place in history because of that event itself. But, you know, I guess people are sticklers for tradition. It is what it is. Let me see here. Statues. Ba, 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 in the church so maybe I've put in the museum I see statues and protests so this happened so this is like a little timeline of the events right this happened last week uh, clashes heard of Glasgow police statue where is it come on okay there you go ba, 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 ba. So this is an article from the BBC. This happened last week. Just to give you like a context of the events, right? So it says, George Floyd protest, the statues being defaced. Mm. It says, when anti-racism protesters in England uh, pulled down the statue of 17th century slave trader and promptly dumped him in the deep waters of the harbour, the message was clear. Edward Colston's ships were believed to have transported 80,000 men and women and children from Africa to the Americas. Bloody hell. But his memory has been honoured uh, for centuries um, in his home of city of Bristol, uh, which benefited from vast wealth. While the government condemned the act on Sunday, protesters said they hoped it signified change. Statues are about saying this was a great man who did great things. That is not true. He was a slave trader and a murderer, historian David Olusugus told BBC News. Global protests like the one in Bristol have shed a light on the city's colonial slave history, slave owning history and the figures represent it. And the interesting thing is when you actually speak to, I think I've seen some videos of people that are that are from Bristol who have said basically they've always had a bit of a contentious relationship with the statue of Edward Corson anyway. I've never actually seen it when I've been to Bristol, to be completely honest. Most of the time when I go there, it's usually, you know, on a bit of a tear up, go and visit all the amazing pubs and bars and restaurants they have there. But it's not this isn't something that just come out of the blue they've always had a bit of a contentious relationship with it i think they put together a petition to tear down the statue that was you know of course ignored like most petitions are but there was this conversation happening and sometimes i think the good thing about protests is that they do bring about change in that i'm still a big believer is that without the video of george floyd dying and without the protests on the streets we probably wouldn't have seen those police officers fired number one that's a big thing because police officers getting fired in america is is pretty recent thing right getting actually fired from their job not put on leave um you know with full pay pending an investigation completely just you know fired and every bit of communication they've put out has been like you know former minneapolis police officer not current police officer or whatever it may be um so i don't think without those videos and protests you get police officers fired and also don't think you get them charged with let alone murder yeah 
it's not gonna happen right mantle or maybe that murder is fucking insane so the protesters the protests do actually work and i think part of the reason why they do work is that people um you kind of push the narrative you push change you kind of give the pro the government no other solution you kind of back them into a corner so when you dump a statue of edward colston into the river um you give the politicians no real recourse because if they pull it back out and pull it back onto the plinth or wherever it is that's going to be a real real nail in the coffin of their you know of their run as mp or whatever it may be and if there's one thing we know about politicians once they get that bit of power or they get that bit of responsibility they don't want to let it go so they're gonna main they're gonna do as much as they can to kind of maintain their level of influence or it's not the status quo but their position right they're not gonna let that thing go so that's the good thing i like about these protests um we've got here about henry Douglas said a monument on the scottish capital edinburgh commemorating partition who delayed the abolition of slavery has been spray painted with the words george floyd and blm for black lives matter the 154 tall melville monument in edinburgh's tire st andrew square was erected in 1823 in memory of henry dundas again really bizarre it's somebody you know, delays the abolition of slavery, but then gets a statue. Interesting. So Dundas is one of the country's most influential politicians in the 18th and 19th century. That's probably explains why he's got a statue then, apart from the slavery, and had a nickname, the Uncrowned King. He put forward an amendment to the bill, which has been abolished slavery in 1792, opting for a more gradual approach. This allowed the practice to continue for 15 years longer than otherwise has been done. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thousands of people have signed petitions calling for the monument to be taken down amid protests over the monument officials have announced that the plaque will be added to offering a reflective details about the city's links to slavery we need to tell our story and make sure that people understand edinburgh's role in the world of historically not just the bits we're proud of but frankly the bits we're ashamed of as well said um edinburgh city council adam mcveigh told bbc because you know this kind of reminds me of do you remember that um episode of black mirror where there's like a museum of slavery and that girl goes to go visit it. That kind of reminds me of that. I wonder why they just, just don't have that, like, um, you know, embarrassing parts of our history. I don't know, kind of section in the National Museum. Maybe, I guess there's some leftists who are like, they want to know where to stop. Because I think the place where you stop is like, okay, let's not have these statues erected of, you know, deplorable human beings, right? That's probably not the best message to send out there, right? You want to probably encourage good behavior um to your citizens and also to people in power right you want to kind of give them because you know you want to give people an incentive to do good things right that's probably uh a good way to go about things so if you have statues of actually of people that are commendable people that have honor people that have morals it might re it might in a roundabout way um make for a more honest politician you could hope so right that could that's obviously going to be the hope but you'd also you'd also want to have a place where people could go and be reminded have like a you know sort of like when you go to the Auschwitz Memorial in Berlin or people that actually go on these tours and visit the actual you know the places where they used to have the concentration camps right um there's something quite sobering if you're I guess if you're Hasidic if you're a Jew or if you're just a person in history person you want to just to get more in touch with your history to go to these kind of places and be reminded of the terror that happened there right to be reminded of the lack of humanity that was placed on those people so that you know when you go back to your regular everyday life you are more thankful for what you have right more appreciative position that you have in life even though you have don't might have that much you're thankful that you weren't born in that era why don't we have that for statues why don't we have that to commemorate you know ugly parts of our history in the country just bits in the, in the in the museum that kind of commemorates it. I guess for some leftists, like I mentioned, for them it wouldn't be enough. If you take the statues down and put them in a museum, I'm sure some would protest and say they don't even need to be in a museum. Put them in a book. You put them in a book, people would argue that they should be burned. Right? It, there's no amount of stop. But I think as a good compromise, to compromise with the conservatives who are hell bent on showing the ugly parts of our history, and to also compromise people who don't want the statues to be erected in the middle of nowhere, right? Because I'm because for sure tourists take pictures of this with their statue right of edward colston and have no idea who he was it just you know you go to and i guess that's probably why they get erected in the first place right they're sort of like a quasi tourist attraction people can just stand next to them and take pictures and do that weird thing where they point up that might be part of it but um 